Welcome back. Thank you. Been a huge absence. Five years since we did Making the Bajan Fish Cakes, since we did The Conkeys, about 60, 70, 80, I don't even know. Thousand views later, we back again Christmas. Open doors at the Man Philip House this year. Thanks, so welcome guys and welcome Andre to my kitchen. Thank and you buddy. Today Not you're going to do something for us. Tell us about it. Yeah, so today we tackle, let me go back a little bit. We tackle fish cakes, we tackle corn cakes. We going for the big one now at Christmas. Black cake. I said it. Black cake. Black cake. Yes man, that's what we're going to do. Alright. So tell me about this black cake recipe. Well, Black cake is a little taboo in every Bajan household. Not taboo from the first viewpoint that you don't want it, but taboo from the viewpoint is that people never really sure if they could make it. The texture, texture the feel, mm -hmm. you know, the, the, the smell of it. Mm -hmm. Black cake is like a farmer's choice hand. You've got to have it. Well, I ain't gonna go farmer's choice hand. No, 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 it's not taboo. I hear about them. I left it out this year. Yeah. But anyhow, although we got one here though, <laughs> in, the, in the UK, but anyhow, Black cake. And I just think, it's not as hard as people think. Really? We can do it. We can do it. So you think generally at home people think the black cake is too hard to create? Well, yes. Well, I think so because, you know, even my friends and family and stuff at home, if you talk to them about getting black cake, they all talk about where they can get one from. Mm. Some person out here, some person out there, these days, buy one. Anyway, we can leave that one again too. But... Very few people seem to think they can make it. Okay. But I think they no. can. Are we going to show them how? You know, we are men of science. Men of science. So if you are going to say it's easy, prove it. Tell me about this recipe. Recipe is simple. Just think about this. You got your pen, you got your paper. Got don't it. worry if you don't have it. You can press pause. You got yours. I have mine. Ready. So we thinking about halves. Think about this. Halves. Okay. Now everything I say we can divide by two. Let's start with the mixture. It makes me. That we got here. This makes me. We had had it soaking for a year. Yes, people. Since last December, okay. this has been going on ferment, adding some rum, doing some different things. But if you think about it, if we got two pounds of this, that's what we started with. Two yeah. pounds of this, divide by two. Then we're going to the flour. Okay. We're going to have one pound of flour, divide by two. Okay. We go to the butter. We're going to have a half a pound of butter divide by two we go to the sugar we can have quarter pound of sugar and you don't need more sugar than that this is fruit it's already sweet you don't need to make it any sweeter quarter pound of sugar is where we go then we got some essence we got some nutmeg we can grate on top obviously we're going to do some browning at some point in time okay and we can do this simple recipe you can make a great black cake with that recipe trust mm. me so, tell me something. You mentioned some things there. You mentioned rum. So there's rum that you're pouring into that mixture. That's right. How much rum are you putting in there? Rum, well, rum is up to you. Okay. We got some Mount Gear here. Maybe. Inside you. <laughs> but we have some Mount Gear here. Yes. And I would add as much as I want. I like the taste of rum in my cake. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about the children. The children will be fine. All Bajan children grew up drinking some rum in black cake. Nobody ain't dead. Nobody ain't going out killing nobody. We are right. Rum in there. But for those who would say, I actually don't like the taste of alcohol. I don't want alcohol in my cake. Is there any sort of approaches or advice or thinking that you have around that? Well, two things. We know we got many people that say they don't like rum, but they were still eating in cake though. <laughs> we know that is true. But if you don't want rum in the cake, it is fine to just mix the fruit and just leave it. Mm -hmm. It will naturally ferment on its own. There will be a slight hint of alcohol, which is the fermentation process anyway. But it's not that uh, the amount of percentage of alcohol you get from rum. Just okay. mix the fruit and you can leave it there to put down. And when you talk about raisins and prunes, you mean just dry fruit that you would get? Just regular just raisins. Raisins. Regular like raisins. raisins. Back in the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Back in the day, you know, you had your raisins with the seasoning and your hair squanch, squanch, squanch all the time. Mm. These days, don't have to happen. Nobody wants to hear that. Nobody wants to hear that. that. It feels as if, well, you didn't finish the cake. You didn't make it properly. Something went wrong. Mm. But these days, you got seedless um, raisins. This is what you want. You want raisins. Mm. You got some mixed peel. You want some prunes in there. Not too much prunes. 
be careful with the prunes. Okay. But you have to got some. Yes. And you put them in there. And at a basic level, that is it. Now some people add cherries, some people mm -hmm. add currants, some mm -hmm. people add a few more things in there. But at a basic level, a good, decent, well textured, well flavored black cake, that's all you need. Okay. Well, Andre, I'm intrigued. I'm gonna leave you to it. I have some other things I need to get to. No worries, man. But come on. We're gonna do it. As we say, great. Open Doors 2017. We got Phil. Yes. But we're gonna do some black cake now. He got other things he gotta do. Come we on. can get to how this thing working and how we do other things and how we put together all the different mixtures. We can get to that mark behind the camera. Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 from man. five years ago, you know, the three of us, how we do it. We can get to it. So this is this is mixing up the 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 ingredients that you mentioned so far. Yeah, well, the first thing you're gonna do, you're gonna mix your butter and your sugar and get your sugar to dissolve. One thing, let me correct something. Um, I didn't mention eggs. For that recipe, we're using six eggs. I've already added two here to this mixture with the butter and the eggs already to help with the sugar to dissolve. We're gonna add some more and we're gonna go from there. But six eggs, we added to that recipe, huh? Yeah. Well, we don't have a mixer here at the moment, so we got a handheld mixer, so I've been using that. So a few things there just to be careful of. Obviously, when you're using the mixer, it's a straight edge bowl, and the mixer um, handles are able to go right around and get everything. With this particular bowl, it's tapered. So with the mixer, you, with this handheld mixer, you may not get into all the corners. So every now and then, you just need to pause, make sure you get everything from the corners, make sure any sugar that may be lurking at the bottom, that you get it all mixed in and stirred in. That stuff now, we're doing pretty good here now. All the butter and the sugar all fully um, molded together. The sugar is already dissolved. I've added five of the eggs, I've added the last one when we got the flour. So we're just about ready to start adding the flour and just getting the cake nice and ready pretty much. So were you, we were, you, were you looking for in terms of the consistency of the mixture at this stage? Well, the, at this stage, you just want to make sure that the sugar is dissolved and that the butter is pretty much spreading evenly and that you, you add your eggs to make sure that then you get that soft uh, mixture so that when you add the flour that will then add the body back into it and you remember you're pretty much making a cake before you add the fruit so at any stage at this when you once you add the flour at really and you get that consistency of a cake you could actually stop there and just bake a cake if you wanted to but you're making a black cake so then you gotta add the fruit after that and then that's what that's the process that we're going so as I said this is not as difficult as we think if I could do it you can do it too so tell me a little bit about this recipe because obviously I, you you and just come up with this. I ever be honest, I wish I could say I could, but I didn't. <laughs> um, I just got alongside my mother-in-law, who's a terrific baker. You know, she's baked for a long time, and I just I love black hair, and I just decided I'm here in England. One day she was she was visiting, and I just went, "How do you do it?" And I just decided to get along her. Now you gotta understand. As we know, the real bakers at home don't use measurements. They know. They just know. Yeah. So when I yeah. first asked what's the recipe, it was a pause. Now she can bake black cakes. She can bake a million black cakes. They all come out the same and taste perfect. Ask for the measurements, don't know. Nothing wrong with that. That's just um, tradition. That's just um, cultural handing down over the years. And she knows how to do it. And then she paused and then she said the simple thing is to think in halves and she gave, gave me a recipe that I could use and that's what I use on and I would build on that and that's how I, that's how I do it. But you think that there's something in that though because that, that's perhaps the approach that we're missing uh, locally. Well I think so. I think at the beginning I mentioned buying black hair. Sorry <laughs> that again. But anyway, I understand, you know, we live in a fast paced world. People want black hair, someone provides it, you buy it. Not a problem with that. However. What we're in danger of is traditions like this at Christmas, recipes like this being um, removed out of the culture. And if you continue and if you don't keep these things handing down 20, 30 years time, the culture is to buy black cake and certain things are simple. I know it sounds simple. I might, some people might think that, you know, oh, he's just being a little bit dramatic and that kind of stuff. But trust me. That's how it starts. Go to any culture and you will see as things get automated and things move on, sometimes the traditions, as simple as they are, we don't think about it at the time, but they die. And making things like black cake, you know, we did fish cakes one year, we did conkeys another time, just simple things like that. Sometimes they could just disappear if you're not careful. 
Judging from the way this is falling off the, the, um, the spoon here, it's just flowing, but it's not running, if you understand what I mean. Mm -hmm. It's going good, it's falling nicely, good ear in there as well. So I think we're pretty much ready to add the fruit, you know? But how much how much can't you reckon that that recipe would give you? Well, from that recipe, when I've done it before, I've normally, I've got two 10-inch pans here, and that would be usually enough to give me two good solid black cakes. Could be a little bit more, um, or if you have bigger pans, if you have a 12 inch pan, you just got to be careful how you spread it, make sure you get it even, because you want to at least come into slightly more than half the, um, <laughs> at least more than half the, half the pan, that's where you want to get it to. So, um, I think reckon you can get about two, two, two things from that. But, but truthfully, this, you, you can't really make a black cake quick, or can you? Oof. Let me put it this way. You can go to the supermarket and buy a 2016 wine and it would taste decent yes it's, it's all right it was made this year it's in the supermarket 2016 it's fine but then you, you can mean, go you, in, you mean it was made last year it was, oh, 2016 <laughs> sorry made last year sorry sorry man. you know what you mean man made last year a year old okay no problem tastes good pretty decent right but then you can go to the vault and pick out something from say you know 1960, 1970, even 1980, and taste the difference. No, both could work, but one is definitely the one that you want. So, can you make a, a black cake quickly? Of course, you can. Don't get me wrong. Let me see this video. If you got time before Christmas Day, go and get your fruit, try the recipe, you will make a good black cake. No problem. However, if you want to feel the textures and the flavors of the fruit and the rum and how that ferments and gets better over time, you want a black cake sitting for at least four or five months. So this is more about the soaking and waiting there? The soaking and waiting. Very important because that determines the, 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 the feel, the essence of the cake, the texture, the taste that you have. That actually makes a huge difference. So as I say, yes, of course, you can go and you can make a black cake. You can get the fruit tomorrow. You can put it together, follow the recipe, you will have a good black cake. But if you want a great cake, see what I did there? A great cake. You want it going for at least four or five months. So where are you going next then as far as bringing, bringing this now to the oven? So bringing this to the oven now, what I can do now is that I'm going to add my minced meat. I can add that to the mixture. And then one ingredient... Let me, let me just make sure that this, this is minced meat as, as people know it. Right? So <laughs> everybody can be watching this video and wondering what you're talking about. And thinking that we, I thought you're making, thought you're, making you're, like, you're, like, you're making a bolognese. No, no. This isn't that. Minced meat is also the term used for the fruit once you have it mixed and, and that kind of stuff. Um, so we're just about ready to add that to the, to the mixture. And then one other thing that we always use and very important, and sometimes people don't realize, because people see the black cake and wonder, how oh, you getting it that? So this is what makes it black? I, exactly that. You add some browning. Now, be careful. Not Lee and Perry's Worcester sauce. <laughs> You're adding browning. And you can add as much browning that would give you the consistency of color that you want. Now we can add some essence. We got some vanilla essence. You can add mixed essence as well. Again, a black cake is about you. It's about what you like. I like a little vanilla in my black cake. I can add some vanilla essence on there. In there, I'm going also going to get a bit of nutmeg, and I'm going to put a few shavings across the top. Now, be careful. Nutmeg is a very, very strong um, seasoning. Spice. Spice. Uh, spice. spice. Sorry, it's not seasoning. A very strong spice. So if you add too much, it can really alter the taste um, of your black cake. You don't want that, unless of course you love a lot of nutmeg. But I would say be careful and just put a little dusting at the top. But but in saying that, you know that that then goes to what what can go wrong because you know sometimes black cakes can go wrong. Black cakes can go wrong, but again, I think wrong um, depends on what you want. You know, as I said, a black cake is about you. Someone else may come and taste your black cake and figure. You know, that's a little too much nutmeg. Someone would say, hmm, that's a little bit too much um, vanilla essence, or I prefer mixed essence. So that's the kind of stuff that can go wrong. Like that. You gotta remember, your spices can be very strong. So you gotta make sure that you don't put too much in that alternate one way or the other. You wanna get it just right, so it just sits in the, in the middle, sits in the pocket, and you won't go wrong with the black. 